Snowflake can be very, very expensive if not used properly. So in this video, I will show you eight different ways how you can quickly reduce your Snowflake costs. If you are interested, stay tuned. When it comes to Snowflake cost reduction, one of the least known parameters is abort detached query. Imagine that when you run a query on Snowflake, after a network outage or some external service like Tableau terminates connection for some reason, your query will be still processing. And in the most cases, it's great because there is no need to start your warehouse over again and consume credits to repeat this operation. However, if you run a complex query, which consumes a lot of credits and takes a lot of time to process, in a situation like this, sometimes you would need to repeat this operation anyway for your external application. For cases like this, you may want to consider setting abort detached query parameter as true, which will terminate this query five minutes after connectivity is lost. Did you know that the default query timeout in Snowflake is two days? Yes, you heard me right. Snowflake can process your query for two days before termination. If you process extremely large data sets, that's fine. But in situation when you have some ETLs running and by accident, there will be any infinite query loop or even too many nested queries, which would finish some day if no timeout given. That's a lot of time you would need to pay for. In a standard Snowflake version on the smallest warehouse, it will cost you $96. It's not that much, but it looks far worse for larger warehouses because these costs grow exponentially. For example, for processing query on a large warehouse, it will cost you $768. That's a lot of money. So make sure to set a lower timeout than the default one. You can do so by setting up um, statement timeout in seconds parameter on account, user, warehouse, or even a session level. In this case, it doesn't really matter on which level you do so because the lowest value has a priority. As a data transfer to Snowflake is totally free, it doesn't really mean it always is. Even though Snowflake will not charge you to bring data into your account, your cloud provider will usually do this. So, for example, if you have some source database which stores data on AWS Free on US East One region, meanwhile your Snowflake account is hosted on another cloud provider or even another AWS region, then every time you are loading these files you will be charged data egress fees by your cloud provider. And in the case you're processing only new data for one of the tables, that's totally fine. But when you need to process the same files over and over again, like for example, the same data are used multiple times in different ETLs, then you may want to consider moving these files from external cloud storage into a Snowflake. It can be cheaper and also faster at the same time. For this, you can use internal stages, for example. And if you want to learn more about internal stages, you can also check one of my previous videos. Link in the description below. In Snowflake, you pay for every second your warehouse run. So there is no point to keep it inactive for too long. If there is no activity, Snowflake will suspend your warehouse after five minutes which means that you will pay for this five minutes while your warehouse will be waiting for a job. For example, imagine that you have a steady workflow where you run a couple of queries, which takes, for example, 30 minutes and they run every hour. It means every time you start your warehouse after performing its job, it will be idle for the next five minutes. In this case, you will pay for additional two hours of your warehouse every single day. And I guess I don't need to tell you that within a month with higher number of warehouses, this can be pretty huge cost. To prevent that, consider setting up auto suspend parameter with a lower values like a minute, for example, and then go up as needed.
To be honest, there is no better place to start your Snowflake cost optimization than from virtual warehouses. Snowflake's virtual warehouses are main compute costs and should be monitored very carefully. If you are setting up a brand new warehouse and have no idea how your queries will process, then always start with extra small size and scale up as long as your query runs around twice as fast. For example, if on extra small warehouse your query is processing for 10 minutes, then to achieve the best cost to performance ratio on a small warehouse, the same query would need to run in around 5 minutes. Otherwise, if this query runs longer, let's say in 7 minutes, then you are paying additionally for around 2 minutes. So in situation like this, to get the best cost to performance ratio, use extra small warehouse. Rule is simple. If query duration halves, around of course. After increasing warehouse size, keep going. When it stops halving, use previous warehouse size, unless you are willing to pay more for faster execution time. But it won't be perfect cost-efficient operation. Remember to always experiment by running the same query against different warehouse sizes to find the best fit. And by the way, remember you always pay for at least one minute of your warehouse running. So it doesn't make much sense of upgrading query which runs 30 seconds. Multi-cluster warehouses in Snowflake are warehouses that can scale horizontally to handle bigger workloads. Each cluster within a multi-cluster warehouse consists of CPU and memory that can process queries independently. As this is a great feature to boost your performance, you cannot forget about the related costs. As the new clusters can be set up very quickly as needed, there is often no point in starting your warehouse with more than one cluster. Therefore, ensure your warehouse does not overconsume credits from the start. You can do it through setting up min cluster count parameter as one, or you can do it through user interface as well. Failsafe feature in Snowflake is your last chance in case of data catastrophe, as it holds data for the next seven days after retention period for permanent tables. So, after your time traveler expires, Snowflake employees can still recover your data. In some cases, it can save your life, but sometimes this additional protection is just redundant. For ETL flows that constantly drop and recreate tables, you usually don't need additional protection as your data has a backup already. So instead of using permanent tables, you can use transient or temporary tables, which doesn't offer fail-safe storage. With this approach, you can avoid storing unnecessary data for another week and therefore saving a little bit. To keep an eye of the consumption of your Snowflake credits, go to Cost Management tab on Snowsite, where you can find all costs divided on different services, warehouse, tax, and others. You can even set up a resource monitor to get notification when the usage of particular warehouse or account gets too far. So by leveraging tips from this video, you can effectively optimize costs in Snowflake. Of course, there is much more possibilities to lower your Snowflake bills. So let me know in the comments below what are yours and hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss my next videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.